Good evening, Marilyn, Matiel, Elizabeth, and Alex. Thank you for being on time, for being early to your class. How was your day? Did you have a good day? Good evening, Tisha. It was fine. Okay. Anything interesting? No. No. Yeah, it was not a normal day. Okay. It's nice. And the rest of you, how was your day? Hi, good evening, teacher. Good evening, my dear. How are you today? I'm great, but I am still driving oh. to my home. And how's the traffic? Uh, it's horrible. It's horrible. Mm. Um, yes, those chorros. Uh, yes, uh, I have they um, enabled the two lanes or only one? Uh, for a moment, I don't know. You're you're still stuck. No, no, I'm no. moving. Oh, you're moving. Yes. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Well, hopefully, you will get soon to your home, right? Or no? Okay. What do you think? Um, around the twenty minutes. In twenty minutes. Oh, okay. That sounds good. Okay, thank you, teacher. Okay, be patient. Thank you, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you doing today? Well, good. Actually, I'm still uh, working, but I hope I hope that I won't receive any call today. Okay, hopefully it's, uh, uh, it's a little chill. <laughs> mm hmm So you're working in the night shift? Yeah. Oh, what time do you finish? Well, uh, my shift ends at 11 p.m. At 11? Yeah. Wow, that's really late. And how many calls do you receive a day, um, approximately? Well, it's um, probably an average uh, around... 15 or 20 calls, but I not only receive calls, I also uh, receive WhatsApp messages. Oh, WhatsApp messages and calls, so you're multitasking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, that's nice. I think that the worst things are, are the calls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But mm. we can, we, we try to do the At best. least uh -huh. they are not too too many, right? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Well, um, thank you so much, everybody, for being on time to your class. I hope that you have had a good day or at least a regular day. Uh, and for the ones who are still in traffic, just be patient. And uh, nothing else that we can do, just to be patient. Okay, so I'm going to start sharing the screen. Um, we're going to continue working in the custody pairs. And I send another document to you that we will uh, work on later. Yeah, let me make this bigger. Okay, yesterday uh, we, um, we were trying to give advice um to Simon and Frankie uh, the idea of this is was mainly that uh, if you use uh, any kind of auxiliary that can be um for example if your sentence is for future you use the auxiliary will okay um if it is a piece of advice that you're going to provide the auxiliary is should so yes, uh, you can also use auxiliary after the subject and then you follow the same structure. So it's not really complicated as we said yesterday, it is just practice. So moving on with the next, write a paragraph that explains the things that you get done for you and that you do for yourself. But we're going to skip this part that things that you do for yourself. 
because this is not the focus. The focus is to practice with positive verbs and um, expressing things that we have we have get done uh, by someone else. Like um, thinking about it. Let's see. Maybe let. The first sentence, I had my neighbor clean my gutters this year because I am afraid of hate. So, but I do most of the things around the house myself. Uh, of course, I had an accountant do my taxes and occasionally get my, hus my husband to move the lawn. So, we're going to uh, to make a short paragraph similar to this one. But we're going to focus on things that we have we have gotten someone else done that those things for us, like um, for example, a haircut, or um, if you have your car washed in a car washed. Let's think about um, maybe activities for the. For the past month or maybe this month because it's, it's almost finished. <laughs> so it can be in the month of August. Maybe you get a haircut or um or someone uh, to bring food to your house. Maybe you have ordered deliveries, things like that. So let's make a short part of similar to the one that we have here. But we're not going to talk about things that we have done for ourselves because that's not the, the point here. So I'll give you time. It's not necessarily a big paragraph. Think at least in three things that you can mention that you have someone else to do them for you. And then we're going to share.
finish.
Okay, Dan, let's listen what you have. Volunteers to share? Do you need more time? Good evening, teacher. Good evening. My my paragraph is, is short. <laughs> it's, it's okay? Right. Today uh, is my first day on vacation. My husband and I ordered Chinese food for lunch and to celebrate. I have been watching Netflix all day. I'm very happy because I need to rest. And this other day, I will go beauty salon all day too. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's nice. You deserve it. You've been working really hard. Yes. Yes, very hard. <laughs> Didn't cook today. You had... What? Yeah, so you didn't cook today. No. no, no cooking today. Okay, so you had the food delivered. Delivery. Delivery. Okay, you had the food delivered. That's nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you so much, Aymara. We're going to continue now with the building vocabulary exercise that we have on, on your material that is on page 29. And we need to match the branding components. For example, brand awarenesses, perceived quality, brand association, brand loyalty, and proprietary assets. And we have the descriptions here. So we have to do this matching exercise. It is in page 29 in case that you want to work from your material. And then we're going to check your answers.
Okay, number one, what is the description of brand awareness? Haven't you finished? I think uh, the brand awareness could be the attributes of a brand that come into the consumers in mind when the brand is used. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you for your participation. The attributes of a brand that come to into customers' mind when the brand is discussed. Excellent. Uh, perceived quality. Mm, perceived quality to be the customer's perception of the overall quality or superior superiority. Okay, superiority of a product. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Let's see, brand association. Brand association. Uh, extent to which consumers are familiar with the distinctive qualities of a brand. Excellent. Thank you. Now let's see number four, brand loyalty. Brand loyalty, it's uh, customers consistently purchase products from the preferred brands regardless, regardless of convenience of our price. Excellent, that is correct. Thank you so much. And last, property, proprietary assets. That's, uh, that's the number five, right? Yeah, it's all information, information that is uh -huh. considered in the realm of intellectual property that offers competitive advantage and that it should not be disclosed. Excellent. That's correct. Thank you so much for sharing your answers. They are correct. I hope that everybody has the same answers since they are correct. Thank you so much, Alexander. Um, we're going to check attendance. Let me get the file, just one moment. Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Thank you, Abigail. Alex Enrique. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Coto. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Noemi Ramos. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez. Present. Thank you. 
Emerson Alexander López. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present teacher. Thank you. Gertrudis Aymara Vaquerano. Present teacher. Thank you. Guadalupe Alexandra Calixto. Hazel Vanessa Mengiva. José Enrique Pineda. Present. Thank you. Ulisa Yamilet Pialta. Carla Ivania Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Javier Castillo. Martíel Estabu García. Thank you, Luis. Present teacher. Thank you, Martíel. Manuel Alexander Vázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Ramírez. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra Martínez. Víctor Noé Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Vidal Byron Reeves. Present teacher. Thank you. I continue sharing. Teacher to me not mention. William Rosales. Present. Thank you. Okay. I guess I, I. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, William. Yes, you're the last one in the list, and I was not able to see the last name in the list. Thank you so much. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. Thank you, teacher. Okay. Okay, we have this paper and uh, in this exercise, you will have to think in a national brand, identify the components of the branding strategy and use the questions below to guide you. And this is related to the vocabulary to teach us practice. Um, but I think that we can skip this exercise since um, um, well, um, let's see, I think in the national brand, identify the components of their branding strategy. Okay, so you, you have to discuss the components of a branding strategy of a national brand. Um, for example, it can be the, maybe a beer, like reason, they are national, right? Or um, any other national product. Um, Maybe a, a coffee brand, Coscafe, for example. Okay, so any brand, any national brand. And you have to use the questions like um, related to the vocabulary that we have already discussed and define brand awareness. What are some associations to this brand? Are those associations effective to position the brand in the customer minds when shopping? Perceived quality, do customers get the brand because of its quality? Is price the key to the selection of the brand? Is the brand widely available? Brand association, is the brand able to activate associations in the customer's mind? Does the brand create positive feelings in customers? Are there brand extensions in the market? So I think that 
those uh, these kind of questions to re in order to be able to answer those questions we need to have a, a maybe a research so, and we do not have it so it's like uh, um, worthless to do this exercise so we're going to skip that and uh, we're going to continue in the conversation part and page 30 of your material and we continue with the causative verbs and we're going to continue practicing them and as you can see here in the phrases in bold we have i help people find the best way etc etc so help is a causative verb also let uh, the previous days we have been practicing with have and get now we have other two help and let we're going to add these two to the to the previous ones that we were practicing. Uh, to start with, or to introduce these um, two causative verbs, we have this conversation between Mateo and Angela. Uh, I need two volunteers to role play this conversation. You can raise your hand. Emerson, thank you so much. A volunteer to help Emerson. Magdiel, thank you so much. You can start, Emerson. Okay. Um, I went into business as a lawyer six months ago, but I barely get any customer. I help people find the best way out of legal trouble for a cheap price but they seem to prefer the competition. Probably you need to define the brand of the service you are providing to improve the business. Business. How do I do that? I just usually let customers do some promotion for me with business cards. Your client, clients, teacher or clients? Clients. Your clients can't help you do you to do all the advertising. 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 Okay. Advertising. Right. <clears throat> you are to decide decide what kind of love you focus on. Now you have to focus on the kind of clients you want. Clients? Ah, sorry. Kind of clients you want to work with and define the brand you want. Okay, now let us change. You start now, Magdiel. Okay. I went into businesses as a lawyer six months ago, but barely get any customer. I help people find the best way out of legal trouble for a cheap price but they seem to prefer the competition. Probably you need to define the brand of the service you are providing to improve the business. How do I do that? I just usually let customer do some promotion for me with businesses first. Your clients can't help you to do all the advertising. You already decided what kind of law you focus on. Now, you have to focus on the kind of clients you want to work with and define the brand you want. Excellent. Very good job. Thank you so much for helping us with this role play. And uh, Mike Dian sure. and Alex, thank you so much. Uh, Okay, oh, okay. All right, and the next exercise is related to this conversation. And we need to complete the sentences. For example, number one, I people the best way out of legal trouble. How do we complete sentence number one based on the conversation? I help. I help people find. Excellent, that's correct. I help people find the best way out of legal troubles. Uh, number two. Uh, 
let customers. Let customers. I just usually get customers. Do. Do. Uh huh. Excellent. I just usually let customer do some advertising for me. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, last one. Your clients can't. Your clients can't help you to do the advertising. Excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, Maria and Magdiel, those answers were the expected ones. And then on page 31, we have a short explanation about how to use the cost of verbs. This is the part two. As I mentioned before, in the previous classes, we've been working with um, get and have. So this is the part two with help and let. And in these little boxes, you can see the structure, help, and it's then someone, and then the base form of a verb or infinitive is the same thing. You have the example here. The training helps small business owners replicate the success of big brands. So you see the verb help, it's, and then um, that someone is a small business owner, and then the verb replicate in infinitive without two. Um, Next example, a marketing expect, expert could help you to understand the basic principles of branding. Uh, so you see the, the verb help, and then the, the someone is you, and then the verb, uh, an infinitive with two, to understand the basic principles of branding. Uh, meaning that you can use the base form without two, or base form with two, either or, and this meaning is the same. So with help, you can use infinitive uh, with two or without it, and that's okay. Now, uh, let, the structure is let plus someone plus base form of a verb. We have some examples here. Some companies let clients go through a service trial before they decide to purchase. Then an effective brand lets people explore the benefits of their products. So the difference with help is that um, in this case with let, we just use the base form of verb. We don't use the infinitive with two. Any question here? Okay, let's complete this exercise in number five. Use the verbs in parentheses to complete the sentences. Based on what we study in the grammar boxes there, you have to complete these sentences. Remember that this is exercise uh, on page 31 of your material, of the PDF that you download from the platform. So you can work there or you can use your notebooks to complete this exercise. And then we will go deeper on this topic.
Okay, volunteer for number one. Me teacher. Okay, Alex. Okay, number one. Think about how your business helps your customers to satisfy their needs. Very well done. Number two, volunteer for number two. Investors. Number two, investors. Inve <clears throat> investors won't let companies develop without a plan to improve business plans. Excellent. Thank you so much. That is correct. Number three. Number three, volunteer. The plan. The plan helps employees become part, part of the brand. Excellent. Thank you so much. It can be the plan help employees become part of the brand or to become. Either or will be correct. Thank you so much, Miguel. And number four, being specific about a business brand be specific about a business brand. Let customers identify our products easily. Excellent. Correct. Thank you so much. And the last one, branding. Branding lets the customer add a perceived, add a perceived value to the product. Excellent. Thank you so much for providing us with the answers. Uh, now, uh, we have, how do you design a checklist of steps to define the brand of a product? Read the basic checklist below and discuss it with a partner. Okay, we got a checklist here. Uh, so first, you have to check and then you will discuss. Is your brand strong enough to give you international and external value that you need in your marketing? Yes or no for the following description. Uh, your brand relate to your target audience instantly without too much thought. Hmm. Well, this one is related to the previous exercise. Uh, so we need to have a study on that. So I guess that as for now, it's not, it's going to be worthless to spend time in this one. So let me do a new share. I share a document with you. So we're going to practice all the causative verbs that we have studied so far, which are make, get, have, help, and let. Let's make a review. Um, it says the verbs make, get, have, and help, and let 
are the most common causative verbs in English. They are called causative verbs because they cause something else to happen. Other causative verbs include enable, allow, keep, hold, force, require, and pursue. Um, volunteer to read about make. Make, force, or compel someone to do something. Mm -hmm. Grammatical structure, make plus person plus verb based form. Sample. She made her children do their homework before going to bed. His grandmother made her grandson send a postcard to his parents. Your parents made the boys clean the house after the party. Great. Thank you so much. So we've been practicing with make, and this is just a review. Now, what about get? I volunteer to read about get. Arrange for, for someone to do something. Grammatical uh, structure, get plus person plus two plus bed. Examples on um, I get the architect to modify the plans. The teacher got the children to carry out the classroom. And the old lady got the boy next door to move to know her loan. What's right. a loan, teacher? Hmm? Loan, L-A-W-N. Es el pasto o césped. Great. Thank you so much for helping us. I volunteer to read about have. Yeah, we get, we said that we need to use the infinitive with two. All right. Now, what about have? Volunteer. Volunteer to read about half. Um, have yes, I'm sorry. For some reason, uh, the Zoom app kicked me out, but now I'm back again. I'll start sharing one more time. There you go. Okay. Ask or request somebody to do something. Grammatical structures. Have plus person plus verb in base form. For example, um, I'll have my assistant call you to confirm the date. The architect had the secret secretary make copies of the plans. And the surgeon had the nurse take the patient's temperature. Uh, second, have plus thing plus past participle. Uh, for example, I need to have a photograph taken for my new passport. They had their house painted before putting it up for sale. And my car has broken down. I need to have it repaired. Thank you so much for reading. Now, uh, we have, remember that we have the option to mention the person who did the action. In that case, we use the base form of the verb. Or if we mention an object, uh, we need to use the verb in past participle. We practiced this already yesterday too. Now, let's read about help. Help and net are the new ones. Volunteer to read.
Me teacher. Thank you, Carla. Okay. Here, assist someone or make it possible or easier for them to do something. Grammatical structure. Here, plus person thing plus bear base form. The use of the infinity with to after the bear here is also common. Bu are grammatical and there is no difference in meaning. Example, help someone do something or help someone to do something. Something. Something, yes. <clears throat> uh, the, the, the additional help in you understand and the meaning. Uh, sentences two. Here, near glass, help the old lady read more easily. Um, sentences three. Intensive prepar preparation help the athlete. At athlete. 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 Okay, thanks, athlete, with the race. All right, thank you so much for reading. And yes, um, in the case of help, as we read before, we can use the verb in the base form, or we can add two before the verb, and it's, it doesn't change in meaning. Both options are correct. And now what about help? I volunteer to read about help. Let's, sorry. Thank you. Permit or allow something to happen. Grammatical structure. Let plus person or thing plus verb in baseball. And for example, Eva's father won't let her drive his car. You shouldn't let your children watch unsuitable programs. Tom was careful not to let the dog sit on the sofa. Uh, there's a note. The verbs allow, allow, and permit are more form are more formal ways of saying let. However, with allow and permit, we use to with the verb. And for example, I don't allow my children to watch violent programs on television. Our teacher does not permit us to eat lunch in the classroom. And our school permits students to use the sports facilities after school hours. My mother allows me to drive her car. Great, thank you so much for reading. So as you see in this um, material, you have all the verbs, the meaning of uh, and the structures as well, and uh, some extra information like the one that um, Alexander already read, um, like uh, verbs uh, allow, permit, um, are more formal than let. So that is additional information that can be useful for us. But right now we're going to practice and complete um, in the sentences, using let, have, make, help, and get. Uh, we're going to use the verbs in brackets. Okay. So for sentence number one, it says, I don't, my children, video games, and we have the verb play. So we need to complete here, and I, I send it in this uh, format so that you can modify it at home. So I don't, my children, so what, it, 
What, which of the causative verbs can I use here? Let, have, uh-huh. I don't let my children play video games. Excellent. Let is the, the most appropriate verb since it, it is, um, the meaning is to, to provide or to allow, that's permission, right? So I don't let my children, and the verb with let is simple, right? I don't let my children play video games. And we can change the color here so it can. Okay, I don't let my children play video games. Thank you so much, Maria. That is correct. Now, the police him for the damage he caused. Hmm. Okay, now again, the police, him. Aquí necesitamos el causative verb made. for the damage he caused. Mm -hmm. The police made him pay for the damage he caused. Excellent. And lo vamos a poner en pasado, ya que pues es algo, un, un hecho que sucedió en tiempo pasado. So, yes, excellent. Thank you so much, Mario. The police made him pay for the damage he caused. Okay. And we have two samples already completed. And yes, so we said in the first one we have um, let, porque estaba como eh, lo que necesitamos decir es que se permitir al, a, que algo suceda, ¿verdad? Entonces, por eso acá usamos let, porque estamos hablando como de, de, un, de, de permitir, de dar un permiso o no, o no darlo. Entonces, en este caso, es, no, está negativo. I don't let. Now, aquí, ¿por qué made? Porque vemos acá, es as um, a force uh, or compel someone to do something. Es, es eh, dándole un sentido de que es algo que nosotros obligamos a la persona a que haga las cosas. So, that was, por eso que usamos made. Y, pues, al ser algo que ya sucedió, like en pasado, conjugamos el verbo en pasado. So now, ya hicimos un par de ejemplos acá. Eh, vamos a hacer los demás en breakout rooms para que discutan las respuestas. Eh, recuérdense que en algunos casos se, eh, bueno, con get, el, el infinito, con to, y etc. Ya, eh, y acá tienen la información. Esto se los mandé a WhatsApp antes de la clase. So, y, todos tienen el material ahí para que lo pueden descargar. Voy a dejar de compartir un momento para crear los breakout rooms. Uh, voy a habilitar para que alguien pueda compartir pantalla antes que se me olvide. And we are all set.
okay, the, the third one, block this house, let's click turn. So, here we see the paint. What about you guys? It's it's having. Hmm? It's having. It's house. House is a thing. Ah, you're right. So here, how should be how should be the sentence? Row 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 having his house by net is ten. Julia, her boyfriend. Uh, in the number three, como vamos conjugando, verdad, de acuerdo a los tiempos, y esto dice next weekend, entonces estamos utilizando el present continuous para indicar futuro, verdad. Mm -hmm. Entonces, eso siempre lleva el verbo be. Entonces nos quedaría Rob is having. Is having. Excellent. Mm -hmm. okay. So here in the number four, um, Julia um, made. Made her boyfriend buy buy her a ring, I think. Got. Number four. Yes. Uh, ¿cómo, cómo lo uh, in number four, uh, acuérdense que make es cuando es algo que, digamos, es en cierta manera algo que obligamos a alguien a hacer algo, ¿verdad? Es un poco forzado. Entonces, mm -hmm. eh, make creo que no es el mejor causative verb para la cuatro. Mm -hmm. But... Ajá, got. Julia got her boyfriend to buy a ring. Goodbye. Well, but there's some people who uh, who does this this thing to mandatory to buy. <laughs> so that's why I think make. make. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so number five, Sam. Okay, I need the grocery can. Um, 
I have finished. Uh, I don't know if someone wants to discuss. <clears throat> mm. 
Martiel, José, Vidal, Francisco. No, yet, teacher. Okay. Okay, don't worry.
Have you finished here? Do you want to share the screen, Alex, so that we can share your uh, check your answer? Uh, well, I on cell phone, so I can share, but maybe I can write. read them. Or you mm -hmm. can read them if you want. Okay. Let's see. Well, for number one, is this I okay, for me, number one is like that. And the verb let um the other is play. I don't let play I don't let my children play video games. Mm -hmm. Number two And number two, the police make him pay for the damage he caused. Okay, está bien usar make, pero como es una acción en pasado, no está ah, en pasado. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, he, he caused it. Uh -huh. Entonces sería made. Made, uh -huh. Uh -huh. made in past. The police made him pay for the damage caused. Yeah, if I can. Thanks, teacher. 
Okay. Number three. Number three is Rob will have his house painted next week. Weekend. So. Okay, correct. Mm -hmm. Number four is Julia. Number four is Julia Julia gets her boyfriend to buy her a ring. Mm. I think it, that is gets uh, or or it could be have. No, the, the, it's okay mm. the, el, el usar get. Solo que acordémonos que el presente simple se utiliza para hábitos, rutina, hechos, etc. Y el que le haya comprado un uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh, anillo es una acción ya en pasado, ¿verdad? Es como tendría que ir got. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, ok. I got it. Uh -huh. But it's okay. Está excelente que identificó que el causative verb para ahí era get. Solo que como es una acción ya pasada, ¿verdad? Es como um, got. Ok, thanks, teacher. Mm -hmm. The got her Okay. Yeah. It has more sense. <laughs> ok. Mm. Number five, Sam. Sam helps me to carry the grocery. Mm -hmm. Está bien el verbo. Um, help uh, me. Help me. Uh -huh. Because it happens. And, uh, uh -huh. it's como me ayudó. Pass. Uh -huh. okay. A que puede ser que si siempre le ayuda, ¿verdad? <laughs> si Sam siempre le ayuda a cargar los uh, comprados, uh -huh. estaría bien dejarlo en presente. Si es un hábito de Sam, Sam helps oh, me okay. to carry the grocery. And, okay. Entonces, lo puede dejar así. O oh, Si lo alguien lo hizo en pasado, help me, está bien, como sea. Ese se puede interpretar de ambas maneras, ¿verdad? Eh, por yeah. ejemplo. ¿eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it has uh, different meanings or ideas. Uh, eh, communica. um, Comunican it's... como diferentes ideas, porque uno ajá, le dice que es un hábito, es algo que sucede normalmente y otro es que... Ajá, solo pasó una vez, por ejemplo. Si solo, digamos, me ayudó el día de hoy o me ayudó ayer a cargar las cosas eh, porque uh -huh. normalmente nadie me ayuda, pero ahorita estoy enferma, no puedo hacer fuerzas y alguien me ayudó. Ese fue Sam, entonces fue un evento ya pasado. Entonces se puede a, hacer así. Sam helped. En pasado el helped. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ok. 
Okay, that's okay, good. Y quizás podemos chequear hasta las seis porque ya se va a terminar el tiempo. Ah, y mañana okay. seguimos, mañana seguimos, pero podemos chequear las seis. Ok, está bien. It is uh, when we were little, our parents used to let us stay up late on Sundays. That is correct. Excellent uh -huh. job. Okay. Yeah, it's correct. Okay. Thanks, teacher. You're welcome. Thank you for your interest and participation. We'll see you in the main section. Okay, everybody's back again. Unfortunately, we were not able to finish checking with the group number two. So, and group number one also, I don't know if you were able to finish, but we're going to check together uh, tomorrow. That's the first thing that we're going to do in the class. And for now, that's it. And I hope that you sleep well and see you tomorrow. Bye.